Welcome to this answer explanation video for efficient subtraction. This video will talk through the efficient subtraction worksheet and have a look at some of the tricky bits. Question one, solve the calculation 2,405, subtract 1,205, which method did you use? Looking at the two numbers I have here, I can see that my ones digit is the same and my tens digit is the same. So I could actually just count on in hundreds until I found the answer. That's one way to do it. You could partition it to just find the difference between the thousands and the hundreds. If you wanted to check it, you could use a column method and I'll show you that now. So we would align our numbers. And then we would start with our ones. Five, take away five is zero. Zero, take away zero is zero. Then our hundreds, we've got four hundreds, take away two hundreds, which leaves us with two. And then 2,000 take away 1,000, which will give us an answer of 1,200. So the method you use is up to you. It would make sense to maybe check it with the column method, but because we're only changing the thousands and the hundreds in this particular calculation, you could just count on to see how many hundreds you actually needed. Question two, show three different methods to solve the calculation below. 5,293 subtract 1,959. The different methods I'm going to show you are just an example of different ways that you could do this. I'm going to start by having a look at how we could do this on a number line by finding the difference. So we'll start with our smaller number, which is 1,959. And then we're going to count on in jumps until we get to the big number, 5,293. So if for my first jump, I add 41, I would get to 2,000. I can then do a bigger jump in thousands and add 3,000, which would take me to 5,000. And then our final jump would be to add on the 293 to get to that final target of 5,293. In order to find our answer, so that we know what the answer is to 5,293 subtract 1,959, we need to add together what we jumped by. So 41 add 3,000 add 293. And we add the three numbers together, we would get 3,334. So that would be the answer shown by using counting on on a number line. Another way that we could do that is by partitioning the number. Now I'm going to partition it as a kind of expanded column subtraction. So I would show each of my numbers. So I've got 5,000. I'm going to split it into thousands, hundreds, tens and ones. Two hundreds, 93. And I'm subtracting 1,950. Nine. This is a good way to be able to see how we've exchanged as well. So starting with our ones column, we need to do three take away nine, which we can't do. So we'll exchange a 10 from here, which will reduce that to 80. But now we've got 13 in that column. So 13 take away nine is four. 80 take away 50 is 30. 200 take away 900 we can't do, so again we're going to exchange. And that leaves us with 300. And then 4,000 take away 1,000 is 3,000, which brings our answer up to 3,334. So we've got the same answer there. Our final way is by doing the formal method. So we'll draw that, we'll write out our Calculation again. And again, it's going to be similar to this expanded method here using our partitioning, but we'll go through it together. So three take away nine we can't do. We're going to show that we're forming an exchange. 13 take away nine is four. 80 take away 50 is 30, represented by the three. 200 take away 900 we can't do, so we can exchange there. So we've got 1200s take away 900s, that's 300s, 
and then 4,000 take away 1,000, which is 3,000. So we've shown it three different ways that our answer is 3,334. So it's about finding a way that you feel confident with. If there's exchanges, I think it's better to go for a formal method or the expanded method like this. Okay, question three. There are 3,457 cars in the car park. 1,046 cars leave the car park. How many cars remain? Use an efficient method to solve the word problem. So I'm going to start by writing out our calculation. So I've got 3,457. Subtract 1,046. Having a look at the numbers here, we don't actually need to perform any exchanges, so you could have done this by this part by partitioning, but I'll show you how to do this as a formal method. So seven ones take away six ones is one, 50 take away 40 is 10, 400 take away zero, still 400, and then 3,000 take away 1,000 is 2,000, so 2,411. You might have done a different method to get the answer. That's absolutely fine. As long as you got the answer of 2,411, you might have been able to do that in your head when there's no exchanges. Question four, write each subtraction next to the method you think is the most efficient in the table below. And we have three different subtraction calculations. I've already completed the first one and I've said that for counting on, I would go for this calculation here. 2,347 subtract 1,847. The reason I've said counting on is because the tens and the ones remain the same in both calculations. So I can easily count on from 1,847 up to 2,347. For the column method and partitioning, you might have different ways to work out the answers and that's absolutely fine. For this question, these are just suggested answers. The important thing is, is for you to be able to explain what you've chosen and why and choose a method that works for you. Uh, for example, column method, I would do the calculation 8,394, subtract 3,023. And the reason for that is the difference is quite big. So I feel more comfortable using a column method for that particular calculation. In terms of partitioning, I would then go for 7,835, subtract 6,804. And the reason for this one is, like with this one, there's not going to be any exchanges, but the difference between the two numbers is quite small. So I might be able to partition that in my head and work out the answer. But it's up to you. And as long as you're able to explain why you've chosen which method, that's absolutely fine. Question five, check the calculation below. So we have 8,970, subtract 7,570, which equals 1,400. Is this method efficient? Create another calculation where the column method is efficient. For this particular calculation, I would say this method isn't efficient. And the reason for that is in the calculation itself, our ones have remained the same and our tens have remained the same. So what we could have actually done is counted on in hundreds from 7,570 up to 8,970. We could have even looked at doing that in our heads. We could have done that mentally. A calculation where the column method would be more efficient might be a calculation where we need to carry out some kind of exchange. For example, we could have uh, 6,415 subtract 2,906. Here we would need to carry out an exchange. So five take away six we can't do, so we can exchange from here. 15 take away six would be nine. Zero take away zero is zero. 400 take away 900 we can't do, so we have another exchange. We can now do 1,400s take away 900s, which is five. And then 5,000 take away 2,000 is 3,000. So our answer would be 3,509. You could have chosen any numbers to prove that it would be efficient to use column method. I've chosen these numbers here because I knew I'd have to carry out the exchanges. And I've proved it 
by completing the calculation and getting the answer. You might have a different calculation, you might have a different answer, that's fine, as long as you've shown that you needed to use column method for it. Question six, do you agree with Alan? Explain your reasoning. So Alan is saying, you should use the column method to check any subtraction. Your answers might differ here, it's about what you think, but I would say that the column method is a specific type of subtraction, so it doesn't just have to be used for checking. You might want to use it if the two numbers can't be subtracted easily mentally or by counting on. Question seven. Ivy and Ted are solving 7,283, subtract 5,179. Ivy says, I'll add one to both, then partition and subtract. Ted says, I'm going to count on using a number line. Complete the calculation using both strategies, which was quickest and why. For this particular calculation, I'm going to start with Ted's method and I'm going to count on using a number line. So that means I'm going to start with my smallest number, which is 5,179. And then we're going to count on until we get to 7,283. My first step is going to be to get this number up to 5,200 so that it's easier for me to count on in thousands. So I draw my number line in, and then my first jump, I'm going to add 21 to take me to 5,200. My next jump can be a little bigger, and it's going to take me to 7,200 because that's near our target number. And this time, I have added 2,000. My final jump is going to be to add on 83 because that will take me to 7,283. The last step of this method is to add these three numbers together, which is sometimes a little bit tricky to do in your head, especially once you've already worked out how big each of your jumps will be. So our answer for this one, once we've added them together, will be 2,104. Ivy's method was to add one to each number. So let's have a look at what that would look like. We would have 7,284 subtract 5,180. So let's have a look. We can then see we don't actually need to carry out any exchanges in this particular calculation. 4 take away 0 is 4. 8 take away 80 leaves us with 0. 200 take away 100 is 1, and then we've got 7,000 take away 5,000, which is 2,000, and we get the answer, 2,104. So we have the same answer both times, but I would say that Ivy's method would be quicker as it requires no exchanges and it can be done using partitioning. We've just proved it there using a formal method, but you might have different ways that you've proved that too. That was a video explaining the answers to the efficient subtraction worksheet from Classroom Secrets. To watch the video tutorial for the same step, please go to kids.classroomsecrets.co.uk and for more worksheets, go to classroomsecrets.co.uk. Thank you for watching.